prison time, you're in a box. Every second, every day, every year, every decade, there's no hope. No matter what you accomplish in there, no matter what you do in there, you're still in that box. In 1983, Dewey Bozella arrived at Sing Sing Maximum Security Prison, a broken and bitter man. Life had hardly been fair to him. As a nine-year-old boy in Brooklyn, New York, he'd watched his father beat his mother to death. A few years later, it was his brother, stabbed and killed in a fight. At 17, Dewey moved upstate to the small city of Poughkeepsie to get away and find a better life. A few months after he arrived, he was arrested for the murder of a 92-year-old woman. The only evidence against him was a couple of local criminals who swore he did it. But Dewey Bozella got 20 years to life. He spent his first few years behind bars, angry and isolated. Then he discovered the prison boxing program. It was in this unlikely sanctuary of serenity that Dewey found hope. The whole boxing my life, boxing is what saved me. Boxing deals with morals, obligations, and responsibilities. And the main thing is discipline. It helped me to find that freedom I needed. That was my peace. In the ring, life made sense, and Dewey's talent was unmistakable. He became the prison's undefeated light heavyweight champion. So impressive were his skills that a special fight was scheduled at Sing Sing against New York City's Golden Gloves champ, Lou DeVal. It was one of those fights. It was, it was a war. I hit him with a good body punch. I thought I had him. He's one of those guys who just kept picking. He hit me with a three-punch combination. Blood just came straight down, just like that. The fight was stopped. I was the lucky one, because if I would've got cut, he would've probably won. I walked out of Sing Sing with like, whew, <sighs> dodged a bullet. What I loved about it, even though it was a loss, was the fact that he's the first man to knock down Roy Jones. I can't complain, I'm happy. Win or lose, Dewey had found his salvation in boxing, and boxing had given him the strength to embark on a much bigger fight. The fight of his life. The fight for his freedom. It began with a retrial in 1990. We were very optimistic. Everyone in the courtroom, when the jury went to retire, had said they'll be back in a half an hour with a not guilty verdict. The district attorney was nervous and quickly came to Dewey with a deal. If he admitted his guilt, he'd walk out of court a free man. But boxing had transformed Dewey, and in that moment, he made a choice. His life would be defined by how he lived it, not where he spent it. I'll die before I tell you I did it. I can't, I can't. You're not gonna make me say something I didn't do. Everything that I stood for, everything would've been taken away from me, everything. I can't live with you or anybody else telling me that I killed an old woman. So what do I do? What do I do as a man, you know? For Dewey, his integrity is the most important thing, and I don't think Dewey would have been able to look himself in the mirror if he had confessed to something he hadn't done. That choice would cost him. When somehow, with even less evidence than the first trial, Dewey was convicted again and sent back to prison. But in Sing Sing, the fighter was defiant. To Dewey Bozella, it was simple. The only thing to do after a knockdown was to get back up. Dewey would write to me, can we do this, can we do that? Dewey always felt that he would get out. My faith was based on having his side that I'm getting out. He wrote Jet, Ebony, 60 Minutes. Dewey never gave up. Dewey Bozella had walked into prison all but forgotten by the world. But inside, he had made a choice to better it. He spent his days in the gym training his body and his nights in the classroom training his mind, earning bachelor's and master's degrees. He also married his girlfriend, Trina, all in an effort to leave the past behind. But life behind bars could make that very difficult, never more so than the day Dewey went to the prison chapel and came face to face with the man who'd murdered his brother. First thing I did was look him in the eyes and I asked him the question. So why did you murder my brother? His words were to me. I was 15 years old, it was something that just happened. Right then and there, I forgave him. Even though Dewey was behind bars, he woke up every day loving life. He would come down on a visit, smiling, laughing, 
That was just Dewey. I learned to take myself from the bad position and make it a better position because if I hold on to it, I'm just gonna burn with, with hatred. I ain't allowed prison to make me bitter. My attitude was that I had to make myself happy. Even when his very innocence cost him a chance of parole two decades into his sentence. Parole should have been a rubber stamp, and it wasn't for the simple reason that Dewey wouldn't confess to a crime he hadn't committed. I said, Trina, I'm not telling these people I did it. If I have to die in prison, that's just the way it is. And he meant that. And that was very hard for me, because I don't want to hear that. I said, Dewey, you're not coming out of here on parole. You're going to walk out the door a free man. With Trina at his side, Dewey's determination to clear his name only got stronger. For years, he'd been writing The Innocence Project, an organization that uses DNA evidence to help the wrongly convicted. In 2003, after 20 years in prison, his persistence only grew. He wrote the same exact letter every week. I have been writing this firm since 2001, and no one had answered my letters. So here I am writing again, asking for your help. I have for the past 26 years been fighting to prove my innocence. Finally, five years after his first letter, the Innocence Project took Dewey's case. And immediately the lawyers were shocked at the injustice they discovered surrounding his two convictions. But disbelief turned to despair. When they learned that all the physical evidence from the case had been destroyed by police. With no DNA to work with, the Innocence Project could not continue. My heart just sunk. I knew he was innocent. I knew that if somebody just dug in there, they would find something that would overturn that conviction. The Innocence Project referred the case to a powerful law firm in New York City, where a pair of young lawyers were willing to dig in the first criminal case of their careers. We were facing incredibly long odds. We had lost files, we had dead witnesses. He needed a miracle and we needed a miracle to find something to prove that he was innocent of this 30-year-old murder. What I did was let them see through me there's hope. Never give up attitude. Dewey's attitude was contagious and the lawyers started from scratch, re-examining every detail, reconsidering every clue. And though there was nothing leading them to believe that a meeting with this man, the lead detective in the murder, would help Dewey, they met with him anyway. To their astonishment, Arthur Regula handed over a copy he'd kept of the 30-year-old case file, the only file he had taken home with him when he retired. He asked me why I kept the case file, and I, I told him I figured someday someone would come knocking on my door. There were certain things in the case that made me have doubts whether Dewey Pizzello was actually involved. Just could never throw it away. This was big, this was important. This is the connection that we're looking for. This is finally something that can get him out. And so all of a sudden, we had evidence showing that the people's witnesses were lying, that another suspect actually had confessed to the crime, and the prosecution had hid both pieces of information from Dewey for 30 years. For more than three decades, Dewey had been labeled a murderer, kept behind bars for a crime he did not commit. All the while, he'd maintained his innocence. And now, the new evidence uncovered offered hope that the scales of justice might finally weigh in his favor. On a rainy day in October 2009, Dewey was brought to the same Poughkeepsie courtroom where he'd been convicted twice before. Until I hear it, then that's when I believe it. We've been through it all. The journey has to come to an end. It's our position that the matter must be dismissed in the interest of justice, and the people so move to dismiss the indictment. Uh, Mr. Pazella is ordered to be released immediately. I said, it's finally over. It's finally over. In my heart, what I was saying is, you're my husband, and you go home with me today. After all the years, all the way to the age of 51, I 
finally got my name clear. From the moment he walked out onto the courthouse steps, he was not angry and he wasn't going to try to uh, uh, point fingers. I'm glad that it's over with. Whatever the prosecution and, and, and the police did, I'm, I'm going to let it go because I got to move on with my life. If I worry about what they did, I'm never going to get anywhere where I need to go. All those years behind bars, Dewey had been preparing for this day, the day he would be free free to live the life he'd fought so hard for. Today, Dewey Bozella fights for a new generation, using his skills as a boxer to teach the values and the discipline the sport taught him in prison. He also holds on to a dream, to get back one small piece of the life that was taken from him. He wants just one fight as a free man. It'll be easy to train for, considering he's already won the most difficult fight he'll ever face. A man's reputation is everything if he's fighting for something that's of a worthy cause. My worthy cause was my freedom. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home.